Yeah. Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, the challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. King, King, one, Husky. Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon, a stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush, bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Even in the glowing warmth of the neat, homey cabin, Judy Smith momentarily shivered as she listened to the shrill, relentless wind that tore at the door and windows in a fury of frustration. Yet for Judy and for her young husband, Dr. Harvey Smith, the beauty of the Yukon Territory not only held a certain fascination, but also offered a haven of refuge that had brought them peace of mind since they had arrived at Selkirk and moved into the cabin on the outskirts of the raucous settlement. Judy's attitude of tremulous listening gave way to smiling expectancy as she heard the stamping of feet outside the door. Harvey, darling, you must be shocked about frozen. Let me help you remove your parka. Thanks, Judy. I'll get you a bowl of nice hot soup right away. No, no thanks. But Harvey, I know you're cold. Get a bowl of hot soup. I said I don't want it. Isn't that enough? Why, Harvey. I'm sorry I lost my temper, honey. Well, I guess I'm pretty tired. Harvey, tell me something. Tell you what, Judy? Something's wrong, isn't it? Oh, now, honey, don't go worrying about me. I'll be all right. You know, I've been worried about old Pete's condition Now, wait, and... Harvey. I know you better than you think. And I've seen you this way before. Now, now what's the trouble? Oh, it's, it's this infernal wind and cold and, and snow and ice. I... I'm getting fed up with it. No, Harvey, you know that isn't it at all. Why, only yesterday you spoke of how wonderful it was up here. No. No, there's something else, dear. And I have an idea what it is. Well, what do you mean? I mean that the look in your face can be because of only one thing. He has come to Selkirk. Now, listen here, Judy, I... Oh, I might as well tell you that you're right. He has come here. Right this morning. Oh, Harvey. Why? Why can't he let me alone? I thought we'd be free of him up here in the far north. Then just when I begin to feel free again, I see him. Watch. Wait. I know, Harvey, but you can't let him affect you this way. Don't you realize that's exactly what he wants? Yes, yes, I know that. Harvey, darling, we've got to face it. You can't keep me running away forever. You must overcome your fear of Carl Stroke. Believe me, Judy, I've tried, but it's no use. I worked and studied long and hard to become a doctor. I know. But, oh, it isn't so much that I feel what he do. It's the effect on my nerves. I need steady nerves, a steady hand in my work. Of course you do. But ever since Carl Struger swore if you ever operated again, he'd kill you. You've let him hound us from one town to the other. All the way from San Francisco to the Yukon. Oh, you don't have to tell me. I know all that. Let's sit down calmly and talk it over, Harvey. Talk won't do any good. But you must face the facts. Carl Struger is a professional gambler. And he can go into any town and make a living. Sure, sure, I know all that. But you can't. You're a doctor. And a good one. But you have to become established in one place to make a living. And here in Selkirk is your chance. You know it's a growing settlement. The only doctor for miles around is old Dr. Mason. And he's leaving for California next month when it's all comes. It's no use, Judy. With Struger in time, I'd be... He's to blame for what happened in San Francisco, not you. I know. When he first called me to attend his wife, I told him an operation for appendicitis was necessary immediately. Yes, but he refused to let you operate until it was too late, didn't he? That's right. But why remind ourselves of all that? Haven't we gone through enough Harvey, without... listen to... to me. Carl Struger is a cold, calculating gambler. Maybe he would carry out his threat to kill you if you operate again. But his main thought is to make you suffer through fear. To make you give up medicine entirely. Oh, please, Harvey. Face this thing and beat it now. 
While Doc Mason's here, he could do any needed operations. But after What adult... happened when you saw Struger? Perhaps by now, well, he, he might have changed. No, but... honey, he hasn't changed. This morning, as I left old Pete's cabin, I met Sergeant Preston with his dog, King. The sergeant and I stood talking. <laughs> Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning, Dr. Smith. Well, King, old fella. Oh, good to see you again. King considers you a good friend of ours, Doctor. Oh, uh, how's old Pete getting along? Well, he's holding his own. But I'm still a little worried about him. Oh, these dogs look as if they've come a long way. Easy, King. Quiet, fella. Hello there. I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Oh, I'm Carl Struger. Struger. Glad to know you, Sergeant. You can direct me to the hotel. I'll go. Well, well. Dr. Smith. What a coincidence we should meet way up here in Selkirk. Oh, then you men have met before. Yes, Sergeant, we have. In San Francisco two years ago. That's right. <laughs> I have stopped in many towns since then. How about you, Doctor? You're doing well, I hope. Ring. Quiet, boy. Oh, your dog doesn't like strangers, perhaps, hmm? That depends, Struger. Going to stay in Selkirk long? Well, that's hard to say. But perhaps now that I've found Dr. Smith living here, I might be tempted to stay at least until he should happen to leave. I see. I like Selkirk, Struger. My wife and I are happy here. And very much needed, too. Yeah. How interesting. Perhaps I should have taken up the study of medicine instead of professional gambling. So I prefer to gamble with money rather than with life. Listen here, Struger, I... I'm listening, my friend. Uh, never mind. <laughs> Sometimes I do not understand you, Doctor. Though I feel sure you understand me. Well, I must be getting along. Go straight ahead, Struger. The hotel's that two-story building beyond the street there. Well, thank you kindly, Sergeant. I will see both of you again soon. <laughs> you don't like him either, I think. Doctor, I noticed... Sergeant, you... I hope you'll excuse me. I must be getting along. I have a few more patients to call on this morning. And as I walked away, even Sergeant Preston knew there was something wrong. Judy, I can't stand it any longer. We'll just have to move out of some other place, and I'll give up medicine once and for all. The following evening, Sergeant Preston, with a magnificent dog king at his heels, entered the Selkirk trading post. Hunting. Uh, hello, Sergeant. <laughs> well, well, King. <laughs> you know, if you ever come in here without King at your heels, I'd sort of think that part of you was missing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you'd be right, Jake. Hey, King. <laughs> well, uh, what can I do for you, Sergeant? I want some coffee and bacon. Usual amount of each, please. Coffee and bacon. Sure thing. I, uh... I suppose you heard the news about young Dr. Smith, didn't you? News about Dr. Smith? Well, no, I haven't. Well, I guess he ain't got around then yet. Well, what about Dr. Smith, Jerry? Well, his wife was in here today. Closed out their account. What? She said they'd be leaving here long about the end of the week. Dr. Smith leaving Selkirk for good? Uh-huh, that's what she said. Sort of looked sad about it, too. Well, we're going to miss him. Especially with old Dark Mason fixing to go south to Frisco in a few weeks. Yes, that'll leave Selkirk without medical attention. Well, put these on my account, Jake. Sure thing, Sergeant. I'll be in again soon. Pumpkin. So long, Sergeant. <laughs> Goodbye, Keith. Good night, Jake. After leaving his purchases at his own cabin, Sergeant Preston and King went out again and walked the short distance to the cabin of old Dr. Mason. <laughs> Dr. Mason isn't eating supper. It's not good manners to her off his meal, huh, fella? Good evening, Dr. Mason. Well, well. Sergeant Preston and King. Come in out of the wind, Sergeant. Bring King in, too. Hi, monkey. Uh, uh, sit over there by the fire, Sergeant. That wind's mighty sharp tonight. Yes, it is. Uh, right on, King. Well, uh, is this just a friendly visit, Sergeant? Uh, have you got a nake or pain that you want me to treat? <laughs> you look quite healthy to me, though. No, Dr. Mason. Fortunately, I feel fine. Oh. Matter of fact, I came in to talk to you about Dr. Smith. Uh, Dr. Harvey Smith? 
Say, he's a smart medical man to my way of thinking. I'm mighty thankful there's someone like him to leave behind when I go south. That's just it. I heard from old Jake at the trading post that Dr. Smith is leaving Selkirk the end of this week. What? Go ahead. Leaving Selkirk? But he told me just last week that he likes it up here, and so does his wife. Well, I suppose he's beginning to realize that he can do better in a larger place. In some big city in the States, maybe. Maybe. But I don't believe that's his reason for leaving. You don't, Sergeant? Then why do you think he is leaving? I don't really know. Dr. Mason, I... Well, perhaps if you talk to him, you could persuade him to stay here. We need him in Selkirk. Well, now, if he's set on going, I'm afraid there isn't much that I could say to change his mind. I'll tell you what, though. Huh? Maybe if we got a committee of men here in town to go to his cabin and talk to him, they might convince him to stay. Uh, might work at that. I'll go to the cafe with you right now, Sergeant, and see if we can get some men to talk to Dr. Smith. I'll put my things on. All right. <clears throat> I'd have to suppers a good time to find most of the men at the cafe. <coughs> you ready to go, sir? Yes. Go on, King. <laughs> go on, brother. Meantime, in the Gold Nugget Cafe, Carl Struber, the gambler, sat dealing cards at one of the tables. I got you this time, Struger. <laughs> Give me one card. There it is. Yeah, looks like I got him now, boys. <laughs> all right, Struger. There. I'm betting all I have. I'll call that. There. Now, let me see what you've got. Sure. How's that? Three kings, two dudes. So, now you take a look at these. Three aces, two deuces. I win, mister. Why, you dirty cheat? Why not, everybody? Get for cover. This will cover you, Stoker. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Now to continue our story. As Dr. Mason and Sergeant Preston entered the Gold Nugget Cafe, one of the prospectors who had just lost everything he owned, Carl Struger, pulled his gun and shot wildly. Dr. Mason, with a cry of pain, sank to the floor. The great dog King, who had entered with them, took in the situation at a glance. And even as Sergeant Preston called out to him, the massive dog had sprung into action. With teeth bare and a sound his throat, King leaped at the place. Oh, my arm! Get him off! Oh, my arm! Good man to the constable. He's quick. I'm Dr. Mason. He was just coming in. That dog sure moved fast. That dog of yours is a wonder, Sergeant. He didn't give him a chance to shoot again, or he might have shot me. Oh, well, that's the quick episode, Joe Stoker. Dr. Mason. Dr. Mason's badly hurt. Huh? We'll take him in the back room. There's a cop there. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Get, get Dr. Smith. Get him to operate. Get bullets. Otherwise, I... Easy, Doctor. Easy. We'll get Dr. Smith right away. If necessary, he can operate right here. After moving the wounded doctor into the back room, Sergeant Preston started through the cafe on the way to get Dr. Smith. You think he'll pull through, Sergeant? Is he mad off? I'm hoping Dr. Smith can pull him through. I'm going after him right now. Have him get hot water ready for an emergency operation. I'm afraid getting Dr. Smith isn't going to do much good. Easy, King. Why not, Struger? What makes you say that? Oh, it's just a thought, Sergeant. Anyway, I'm betting you won't get Dr. Harvey Smith to operate. We'll see about that, Struger. Come on, gang. There's something about that man, Struger, I don't like. Yes, what is it? Oh, Sergeant Preston, come in. Wait here, King. Mrs. Smith. I came to get the doctor. It's an emergency. Dr. Mason's been critically wounded. Dr. Mason? Oh, no. What's that you say, Sergeant? Oh, get into your park and come to the cafe, Doctor. Did you say Dr. Mason was hurt? I'll yes. get your things, Harvey. Bring all your instruments with you. You may have to operate right away. Operate? But, Sergeant, I'm I... I'm parking the medical kit. Now, you must go, Harvey. You must. I'll help you into your park. But, Sergeant, hold on. Every I... second he counts, Dr. Smith, we have to hurry. Well, I'll go with you and do what I can, Sergeant. 
But I won't operate. I can't do it. I just can't. Give me the kid, Mrs. Smith. Here it is. Thank you. Come on, doctor. One thing. Let's hurry, doctor. A short time later, Sergeant Preston and Dr. Smith entered the cafe, leaving King outside to wait. The two men walked through the crowd toward the back room, which had been put in readiness for the young doctor to administer to Dr. Mason. As Sergeant Preston and Dr. Smith reached the door to the back room, Carl Struger reached out and touched Smith's arm. Just one minute, Smith. Struger. Just let me remind you that operations can result in death for certain people. Out of the way, Struger. Go on in, Doctor. Yeah, yeah. Doctor Smith, I I knew you'd come. It's it's up to you. Bullet lodge near my heart, it seems like. I'll examine the wound. Oh, looks bad. Well, what about it, Doctor Smith? Do you think? Well, I I don't know. I have to operate. Have to work fast. Sergeant, I don't... His life is in your hands, Dr. Smith. Well, I... All right, Sergeant, I'll do it. I'll need some help. I'll help all I can. Good. We'll have to work fast. Get plenty of hot water. It'll be a delicate operation, but I'll do the best I can. In spite of the gnawing fear that Struger's remark had put in his mind, Dr. Smith worked over Dr. Mason with a steady hand. Sergeant Preston, who was assisting, was filled with admiration by his quick, decisive movements as he went about the delicate operation. Finally, after putting the last bandage in place, Dr. Smith straightened up. Sergeant Preston was puzzled by the odd expression on his face. Well, I finished, Sergeant. You think the operation was successful, Doctor? With the proper care, Dr. Mason will pull through all right. I'll pack my kit now. Dr. Smith, I can't help noticing you don't seem too pleased with your work. Oh, I'm well satisfied with the results, Sergeant. It's just that I was thinking of... What were you going to say? Nothing. Nothing at all, Sergeant. Keep Dr. Mason here for the present. I'll try to see him in the morning. I'll go along home now. Good night. Good night. As Dr. Smith went out into the cafe, Sergeant Preston quickly went out the back door and hurried around front to get King. Meanwhile, Dr. Smith walked slowly through the crowded cafe. Now, wait a minute, Doc. Well? Yeah, we're all anxious to know about Dr. Mason. Will it be all right, do you think? Yeah. Yes, the operation was successful. Oh, right. We're glad to hear that. It's a lucky thing for us. We'll have you here in Selkirk after Dr. Mason gets well, leaves for the States. Yeah. I I may not be here. What? Not be here? Well, oh, golly, Doc, you have to stay here. We need someone like you. Why did you say a thing like that? I... Oh, never mind. Forget it. Hold on, Smith. Well, what do you want, Sugar? You remember what I told you in San Francisco? I've never forgotten it. <laughs> I'm sure you haven't. But I just wanted to make sure. Listen here, Struger. You can go as far as you like. I've just decided that I will stay in Selkirk. Now get out of my way. <laughs> I'm sure glad to hear Doc Smith say he changed his mind about leaving. Yes, 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 of course. But I'm afraid his staying here won't be of any help to the people of Selkirk. What do you mean? I have some business to attend to, so I'll run along now. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Harvey Smith left the cafe and started walking slowly up the main street toward his cabin. The twilight effect of the Yukon night made it bright enough for him to notice the figure that emerged from the cafe behind him. The young doctor knew that the warped mind of the gambler Struger would cause him to carry out the threat that for so long made his and Judy's lives miserable. He thought of the calm steadiness of Sergeant Preston, which had helped him so much in performing the operation. The thought gave him courage. Courage to face an issue now. To put to a test the threats of the man who walked a short distance behind him. Harvey didn't carry a gun. But he knew this fact wouldn't deter the man whose strange madness caused him to seek revenge for a fancied wrong. Suddenly, Harvey stopped and turned to face Struber. Well, Struber, we're out here alone. You have a gun. I don't carry one. That's too bad, Smith. You know what happened in San Francisco couldn't be helped. Come to your senses. Yes. You killed my wife with your blundering operation, Smith. I warned you that if you ever performed another operation, I'd kill you. I had to operate on Dr. Mason. You would have died. That means nothing to me. 
the fact that you performed an operation. Dawson. Now, wait a minute. I have enjoyed following you from place to place, Smith. It pleased me to watch you pull up stakes and move on because you were afraid. Yes. I didn't think you'd ever work up the nerve to do another operation. But I'm glad that you did. <laughs> I've waited for this moment. Struger, you're stark raving man. <laughs> Perhaps. But I'm enjoying this moment while you wait for the bullet to finish you off. A murderer can't escape the law here in the Yukon, Struger. Then I tell him that I followed you because you killed my wife. The law won't deal too strictly with me. All right, then. Shoot me if you're going to. I can't stand this any longer. Yes, of course. Here's the bullet I carry just for you, Dr. Smith. King, coming along in the shadows between the buildings just ahead of his master, saw Struger as he slowly raised his gun and aimed it at Dr. Smith. King knew that death sprang from a pointed gun. He saw the menacing gesture of the man whom he disliked so much. The great dog, without waiting for an order from Sergeant Preston, streaked across the hard-packed snow and with a deep throat of jaw, leaped at King. The impact of King's attack had thrown Struger to the ground. The intelligent dog had grabbed the man's gun arm. And seeing that Struger still held the gun in his hand, King vigorously renewed his attack in an effort to make Struger drop the weapon. He'll kill him! He'll kill him all! At the sound of his master's voice, King, trained to obey immediately, released his hold on Struger's arm and stood back snarling. The great dog sensed what Preston couldn't see, that there was still danger. The sergeant Preston approached. Struger quickly raised up on his arm, leveled his gun at King. I'll kill that dog and you too, Smith. Oh, you want to? Oh, my God. Oh, my King. I thought he'd got this gun before, boy. You and King have saved my life, Sergeant. Struger was about to... Yes, I know. I expected him to follow you. That dog, if it hadn't been for him... All right. He's fainted. Let's get him to your cabin, Doctor. He's not badly hurt. Right. <laughs> Followed by King, Sergeant Preston and Dr. Smith carried Struger to Smith's nearby cabin. After putting him on a cot, the young doctor set to work, and working swiftly and expertly, soon finished attending to Carl Struger's wound. The last bandage had just been fastened into place when Struger opened his eyes. What? For a moment, he stared at the faces bending over him. Ooh. Then, trying to rise, he spoke weakly, but oh. savagely. You think that I will believe you saved my life by attending me, Smith? I know my wound was not serious. If you think... Take it easy, Struger. Harvey fixed your wound because it needed immediate attention, Mr. No. No, it would have been all right without his interference. He thought I'd forget. But let me... You're too weak to get up yet, Struger. Yes. Yes, but... But soon I will be better. Yes, thanks to Dr. Smith, who fixed your wound. He thought by operating, making me think that he saved my life, he could get me to give up my intention. Well, he's gone. He killed my wife back in San Francisco with a blundering operation. Your wound wasn't serious, Struger. But without quick medical attention, it might have been. Yes, and it was the same with Mrs. Struger that time. If she'd had an operation when my husband wanted to do it, she wouldn't have... He's to blame for her death. That's not true. <laughs> Just a minute, Doctor. Stuger, I've heard the story from Mrs. Smith. If you hadn't been so stubborn and pig-headed at the time, an immediate operation on your wife would probably have saved her life. No. It was you who was to blame for what happened to her. You waited until it was too late before you'd allow an operation. You were to blame, and it's time you came to your senses. All right. I don't know what to say. I, I was sort of out of my head all this time, I guess. I, she meant a lot to me. I know that, Struger. When you finally let me operate, I did my best. But you waited too long. Well, I'm sorry, Dr. Smith, for, for the way I've acted. It was a madness. I, I couldn't control. Let's forget it, shall we, Struger? Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I suppose the sergeant will make out a case against me because I tried to... I uh, don't think that'll be necessary, Struger. King and I had to interfere to prevent you from committing murder. And I think you've learned your lesson. Oh, yes. Yes, sergeant, I have. Oh, thank heaven. Now Harvey and I can stay here in Selkirk. We need him here, Mrs. Smith. Your husband showed great courage when he operated on Dr. Mason tonight, knowing what the result might be. You gave me the courage to do it, sergeant. I owe a great deal to you and to King. And you can stay here with us until you're well again, Mr. Struger. Of course you can. Thank you, thank you. I thank you too, Sergeant, for, for your leniency towards me. 
That's all right, Stuger. This is one case we'll consider closed right here and now, eh, King? These radio dramas are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health. So long. Thank you.